It's, it's, it's set in the bill. There's three ranges, four ranges of assessment between 25 and 37 percent on your existing uh, UI costs. And I think in the 360 million range, you're probably looking at about a 30 percent assessment. Budget exercise of the issue. I'll give it back to Randy to uh, talk to through all the numbers. With apologies to Shakespeare, the question to bond or not to bond? <laughs> So let's get into this, and I know you're, this is going to be difficult to read these numbers up here, but let me just walk you through this page that summarizes a very detailed spreadsheet that DWS gave us uh, early this week. You start at the top left corner, the beginning balance of the trust fund, 09, was about $82 million. If you go to the bottom of that column, 09, by the end of the year, the trust fund was $222 million in the hole, having drawn that money more from the uh, Department of Labor under the Title 12 advanced provision. Working back up through that column for 09, the, the system had taken in $568 million. It had paid out about $650 and had drawn 222 from the feds. So you can work across this, this uh, spreadsheet, and you can see that right now we are projected at the end of 2011 to be at about uh, $323 million net in the hole. I think the actual number will probably be closer or higher than that. But this is the number they're giving us right now. Moving across there without any bonding, without issuing any bonds, they now project that the system will be back to a positive balance by 2015. That's four years away. This is an incredible change in the numbers that we have been presented with and have been dealing with just a week and prior to this, to this week. So this, I mean, this is fresh data from the Department of Workforce Services. So this is a big turnaround. We had expected these numbers. The earlier projections had been that it would take as long as 10 years to get the fund back to zero. So that was what had prompted the, the, uh, the activity and the effort to pass, uh, what is it, 1125, 1125, to give the state the authority to issue bonds to pay off these, to this debt. Now we learn that for several reasons, number one, slowly but steadily improvement, slow but steady improvement in the economy, fewer people unemployed, more people working and therefore uh, tax being paid into the fund. Add that with, importantly, uh, two things. Number one, two years ago we added, with the legislature's help, we added $2,000 wage base from 10000 to 12000 That added about 20% to the income from the fund annually. That's a 20% increase. And if you're doing the numbers, that's about $360 a year on average per employee, 2.9% of $12,000. Call it 3%. That's about $360 a year. That, that, that had gone up, obviously, from about 300. So that's a substantial contribution that the Arkansas employer and business community had made to the program already <coughs> going into the 2011 session. Then, again, equally important, uh, we trimmed the benefits in reasonable incremental ways, uh, and res that result is, again, about 60 to $75 million a year in reduced cost for the system. So we grew a little bit on income, about 20%, and the current or now, we have reduced the cost of the system by about 20%, 60 to 75 million. Add those two together, the cash flow into the trust fund is dramatically improved because of those two factors and because of the improvement in the economy. So, if you look across that page, the, the, key, the key number is the net UITF, that's the Unemployment Insurance Trust Fund equity. 
And you can see that by 2015, it will be positive 137 million, projected to be positive 234 million by 2017. Yeah, yeah. Uh, these numbers have shifted around and moved right. around a lot, but that, that's absolutely right. That's good news. Yeah. Look, I don't know how you know. I, I'd get up here if I could. I'd, if I'd been on Dancing with the Stars, I'd be doing a Paso Doble across here. <laughs> uh, this is a big deal. This is this is terrific news for the Arkansas business community in our group. So we want to make sure everybody understands what the working parts are so that you can get a feel for, for the options. <coughs> Look, this is your choice to vote. It's not, it's not for the taxpayers to decide. It's not for the voters to decide. It's for, yes, sir. If we came back in, in the next session and, and further cut back those weeks from 25 to say, you know, don't even go as far as, as Michigan reported did, but also you know, maybe to run down about 22, I mean, we would continue to see continued savings. Any, anything you do that changes the calculation. Now, there's some other ways to go at this, and we're, we're convinced that the most significant tweak that was made was freezing the right. index. Yeah. Because the, the result of the indexing is, and this is just a fact point, but Arkansas's maximum weekly unemployment benefit is about $453. The maximum weekly unemployment benefit for the state of New York is $410. We pay one of the highest maximum benefits in the country, and it's certainly higher than all the surrounding states. So we're out of whack with New York, much less with Mississippi or Texas. As the economy improves, the, long, the length of time people are drawing will reduce. I think the average right now is around 18 weeks, and in a normal economy it's about 14 weeks. So if you get most of the people are under the 25 weeks, you're not going to save any You know, the, the big mischief in all this, obviously, Kenny referenced earlier, is in, is in some of the really high unemployment states like Michigan and California, Illinois, Indiana, some of those states that are really been cooperative, especially with their manufacturing base. Now, if you'll flip to the next page, we'll look at what would happen if we issued uh, bonds. And these would not be general obligation bonds by the state. This would be a special revenue bond issued in the name of the state, but it does not carry the full face of credit of the state. It carries only the obligation of a special revenue source, which would be the, the uh, statutory assessment of the employers relative to their current unemployment insurance tax. And as Kenny mentioned, it's a, it would be at the levels we've been contemplating, it would be about 30%. So if you pay right now average tax wage base, back to the $360 a year per employee, you would pay about another $100, 30% of $360. Now that's the average. You know, there are lies, damn lies, and statistics. This is one of those cases. That average of 2.9% runs all the way from one-tenth of 1% one to 10%. So there are employers in Arkansas, some of them may, may be sitting in the room or represented there are employers who pay $1,200 a year in unemployment insurance <coughs> per employee, and a 30% day would be $360 more. That's bigger than a bread basket. So you pay 30% of what, whatever your percentage Whatever your budget. <coughs> whatever your current experience rate is, or if you're a new employer, 30% of the two points. Is that clear? So this this has this has significant potential impact for some employers, more for some than others. The average, again, is 2.9, but many in the states, there were like 20,000 